Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing my first ever wrap-up video uh, for the books that I read in the month of June. So this is a 20 book wrap up so let's get started but actually before we get started I want to show you guys this shirt by Crafty Elise let me just show you guys isn't it neat isn't it fantastic I love it the first book that I read this month was Pray Tell by Amanda Richardson this is an author that I have previously read before and her books are incredibly spicy there's one book that had me like what in the world it features some piercings happening while sexy stuff is happening. I was like, I did not know that this was a kink that needed to be unlocked, but it was. This book was not as spicy as other books that I have read by her, but it was definitely, it was still, it was still spicy. And it's basically this primal dom. I mean, he hosts primal events. What? He has like, like a like just a large forest where he lives, and that's why he hosts primal events, and everybody just kind of like runs through the property, and they get chased and all that. I was like, that is so cool. Next, I read Golden Wings and Pretty Things by Kaylee King. I read Butterflies and Vicious Lies. I think it was last month or two months ago, and I absolutely loved it and this prequel was so unbelievably good it features boyfriend's father not ex-boyfriend boyfriend's father so basically daddy aster he's been lusting after his son's girlfriend for a while not knowing that she has had her eye on him as well um, she has noticed a little bit of a disconnect between her and her boyfriend and something slowly starts happening with her boyfriend's father and there's this one scene that had me like holy crap he they had sex he came inside of her and he's pushing all of the cum inside of him and he was like i want my cum to basically be running out of you while you break up with my son that's when i knew i was in love with him that's that's all I needed to hear. That's all I needed to read to fall in love with Daddy Aster. The next book that I read was a huge disappointment. It's Primal by Eva Marks. It's like the name says, like the title, it has some primal stuff in it. But I, again, couldn't couldn't get into it for the life of me. It's a for, kind of like a forbidden step siblings romance kind of thing going on. And the female main character, she gets kicked out of the house. <laughs> Hi, bud. Hi. The female main character gets kicked out of the house into the wilderness, and so her stepbrother is like, I'm not gonna leave her alone, so he goes with her. I could not get into anything of this book. I could not get into the smut. It was just there, and boringly so. I could not get into the characters. I could not get into just about anything. This just, I love, there are certain, there are authors that just know how to write novellas in a way that in such a short amount of time, such short amount of pages, you can connect with the characters and you can, you like the story and everything that is going on with this one. It was just so tough. Like, it just didn't feel like it served any form of purpose especially when the smut was also boring. It did have some nice dirty talk, but other than that, I was just like, pass. This next book was an honorable mention and it's Forbidden Hearts by Corey Michaels. This is a single dad, nanny, age gap romance, grumpy sunshine, boss's daughter, small town, forced proximity, ASL represented, like no third act breakup. It is absolutely beautiful and fantastic. There's even a crossover with Clover Lay Farms series by Melody Harlow, which I picked up on it and I was like, oh! I was just, I love when authors do that. Like, I think that's like so creative and just so fun to do. We have our single dad who is desperately looking for a nanny. Unfortunately, his only choice is his boss's daughter. One person who had already been a nanny to his daughter and she butchered it up so he was extremely hesitant to let her back in his daughter's life but reluctantly he had to do it and it was just an absolute ball of fun like I just adored it so much I think I bitched this book in like 
less than a day if I'm not mistaken like it was just so good 4.5 stars just absolute feel good and just ah oh, characters that you just you just love and they like stay in your soul. Here we come again with another disappointment of this month and that was Bless Your Heart by Lyra Parrish and this one sucks because I did receive an ARC by this author and I believe this is the author's first book that she releases by herself outside of her Kennedy Fox duo with another author. Despite this being a enemies to lovers slash hate to love romance and despite all the hate that these characters had, once like the hate went away it was just super quick there was there was not even like barely conversations were had to discuss why they hated each other it was just there and then just kind of like poof it's gone no explanation no nothing and it's just kind of like that's not realistic like it's just yeah. there was just one scene that i like i get why it's there but at the same time i was just like I was, it was just not believable to me like summer is unbelievably livid and absolutely pissed off with the male main character because she has been eyeing this house that went up for sale and she wants to create or just kind of form a bed and breakfast there. Unfortunately her enemy is also wanting to get it so that he can expand the business that he has in the, in the small town related to horses and farming stuff etc etc and she finds out that he put a big offer that no one could have refused and other stuff happened that will be a spoiler but anyway point is she was absolutely livid she was just extremely pissed off with so much rage that any other literally any other female would have walked away with the way that she was mad and how it was portrayed in the book with how pissed off she was she just jumped him and had sex with him and then everything was forgotten and it's like you didn't even really talked about it and I don't know it was just there was just a lot of things that I was just like, I really couldn't just, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. There just didn't feel, the, the, between the main characters, there was barely any connection, any tension that could be felt. The major, major plot of the story ended up being absolutely nothing in the end, which just defeated the purpose of the story to begin with. Next we have What the Heart Wants by Nikki Ash. This book surprised me in the best way possible. This is not a spoiler, it's in the description of the book. It starts off with our male our, our female main character Aubrey with her husband and unfortunately her husband passes away and that's just how the book starts and you're so into the story that you're just like like you know it's coming but at the same time it was like like oh my gosh and I got tears in my eyes I was like oh my goodness it was just so emotional the way that just everything built up and then just exploded in that prologue <laughs> I baby boy so it's been I believe it's been four or five years since Aubrey lost her husband and she has not been able to move on. Her best friend dares her to go on a date and she says yes to one guy and then another and she simultaneously dates both of them without knowing that they know each other and without knowing that they know they're both dating her and they're totally fine with sharing her. This is such a cute and heartwarming story despite the tears at the beginning of the story and even throughout it, there were times where I, was just, I just had tears in my eyes. I was like, oh, I was not expecting this book to just, just be so heart-wrenching while also being so cute and just, just absolutely lovely. It's a great pick-me-up read. Aubrey is a fantastic female main character, a fantastic mom to her kids. Her kids are just absolutely adorable. And I love the cinnamon roll heroes. These men were just so understanding and patient when it came to Aubrey and her being able to move on from her husband's death. They were just taking it in her pace. I just, I just love that so much. And the way they were with Aubrey's kids, oh my gosh, you guys. It was just, just so stinking cute. It was the cutest thing. Next. We have a book by the queen of taboo romance, and that is QB Tyler's Keep Her Safe. Now this book is not necessarily taboo, it falls more under forbidden. It does have a massive age gap between a bodyguard and the celebrity that he is bodyguarding. Shay is 18 years old when her security detail gets changed because she keeps evading the security that she already has and in enters Damien at 30 years old ready to change it up and not let her out of his sight. Obviously he was not expecting temptation and all the chemistry that they have together. And because of this temptation he's ready to call it quits because he's like this is just gonna get into 
this is just gonna interfere with my job tragedy happens for Shay and so he is definitely forced himself to just stay and protect her fast forward and Shay is 23 years old and she has a boyfriend until she discovers that he has been cheating on her but because of the PR nightmare that this could create for her her agent suggests that maybe she should continue dating her boyfriend at least for the cameras but in her heart obviously she knows that they're done that she's not gonna tolerate that and now that she's single she cannot stop eyeing Damien once again the explosive chemistry that these two characters have. QB Tyler knows, knows how to write forbidden and taboo romances with so much spice and chemistry and tension. One of the best parts of this book is the fact that our female main character, Shay, dirty talks. And I was like, I was expecting Damien because QB writes some amazing, fantastic chef's kiss dirty talk. I was not expecting Shay to pull up some of the things that she said, and I was like, I am highlighting some of these because, you know, research for a friend, you know? Aside from the incredibly spicy romance, their tender moments and vulnerable moments are also just a major highlight of the story. The way that Damien cares for Shay and all the love that he has for her aside from just being her bodyguard shown through the story so much. And just because of their history and everything that they've gone through, it makes their connection just so vulnerable and raw and so believable. Now, the suspense of this book also had my heart racing like crazy. Unbeknownst to her, Shay has a stalker that Damien has kept a secret from her. But the threats do turn deadly, so he has to share this information with her. And now they're just questioning all of her friends, everybody that she's involved with, because they don't even know who could it be. And honestly, just everything combined made for a truly fantastic bodyguard romance that you guys do not want to miss out on. This next book, Consider Me by Becca Mack, made it into my top favorites of the month as well into my favorites of the year. It is just absolute chef's kiss. It's this hockey romance with a golden retriever hero and Carter, he has been living the life just being a playboy, being a player basically. But as soon as he lays eyes on Olivia, he's absolutely gone for her. This is like he falls first to a T. But being interested in just one woman is entirely new to him and seeing him navigate that was so heartwarming to just read about because you see him just being always vulnerable with her. He's just constantly opening up to her about all his insecurities and just concerns when it comes to being just a boyfriend or just being someone that dates. There's this one quote that I definitely need to read and it says, I like you so much. I like everything about you. Is that right? Is it okay to tell you how much I like you? Or am I supposed to keep it to myself? Tell you once and never talk about it again. Tell you every single day? I don't know, Ollie. I'm new at this. All I know is I really wanted to tell you and also I'm super fucking terrified. And that's Carter in a nutshell. Like he was just, you just want to hug Carter. Like that's all you want to do. He's just, oh, one of my top favorite book boyfriends too. He was just, he made the book. Like, this book without Carter would not have been just, it was just, it needed to have Carter exactly how he is. And I, I truly, this is one of the books that I cannot recommend enough. Like, honestly, it was so good. It is definitely long. There were times where I was like, yeah, it is long, but honestly, just the fact that I got to have more of Carter, that was enough for me. And I just overlooked the fact that it was in fact long but it is 110% worth it when you have Carter. Like, Carter just made it worth it. Next we have Deviant Hearts by Jagger Cole. This is my very first romance written by a male author, and this is dark mafia romance. It was so not what I was expecting. It was more, and it was just so good. There's a lot of tension, a lot of spies, a lot of dirty talk, a lot of action, which was just, it felt like I was watching a movie in my head. It was just absolutely brilliantly done. To stop a mafia war, Neve is forced to marry the God of War himself. So I, part of me thinks that this might have been like a God of War reimagining kind of. She's forced to marry this guy and she's just not absolutely, she's not having it at all. But again, in order to stop the mafia war, the Greek mafia and the Irish mafia need to unite. But they absolutely hate each other. They're a match made in hell. But obviously the more time that they spend together, lines start to blur and maybe they start liking each other and it gets to a point where I was just like, 
absolutely gobbling it up, especially when our male main character is always just like, you're my wife, like you're not sleeping in, other, in another place that is not my bed because you are my wife. And this is way before they even started liking each other. But you can already tell just by that that he was just kind of like, you know, and that's one of the, my favorite things about an arranged or forced marriage is when they absolutely cannot stand each other and he will suddenly say, my wife. Tell me that that does not melt you every single time. It does to me. Next, I read Crimson River by Daphne Perry and the Eden series has to be one of my top favorite series by Daphne. It's just, just so unbelievably well done. Like, I do not know what Daphne ate to write this series, but it worked because it was just absolutely amazing. My favorite is still the second book, Juniper Hill, but Crimson River is right after it. Suspense right from the start and just, oh, absolutely wonderful in this small town that just everybody loves, honestly. So we have a female main character who is absolutely workaholic and she is forced out of the restaurant that she works at by her sister and she gets told to go take a hike. So she goes and takes a hike and unfortunately it's in this hike that she does get assaulted and she barely makes it out. And this news travels to our male main character Vince and he arrives to the small town wanting answers, trying to find this person that he's been trying to find for years. And this is obviously where he meets the survivor and sparks start flying and they start kind of having like a fling while he's in town searching for answers and she starts helping him as well. The reveal that happened was just, I kind of already figured it out but it did not absolutely in any way take away from the story. It was just, again, this it's just Stephanie's talent. She does such a fantastic job and I, uh, oh, like I cannot wait to just finish this series. Also, I am so sad to finish the series with Sable Peak. It's gonna be the last book in this in this world, and I'm just like, oh, it's gonna be a sad day. It's gonna be a sad day when the series ends. Next, we have my third disappointment of the month, and that is Golden Hour by Chelsea Hart. This is Chelsea's debut novel, which makes me so sad that this was my experience with this book, unfortunately. But I honestly think that the only reason I finished the book was because it was an arc that I received for it. Otherwise, I, I would have DNF'd it a long time ago. This is a small town hate to love story, and I could not get behind why the male main character was hating on our female main character, June. It just felt like it was thrown in there without too much thought. It's like, I need a reason to make him hate her. Oh, let's throw this in there. And I was like, it just did not work for me. It was entirely stupid and it could have honestly been done better. Another major issue that I had was how this book included a lot of just negativity towards June's weight. It just felt, I just felt so uncomfortable reading it to be honest. Everybody had a comment on how she needed to lose weight and I feel like I would have read something like this in a young adult novel and not in an adult novel and if it had been in an adult novel it could have been done a whole lot better than it was or maybe even not included at all. I did like how the author gave introductions to a lot of the side characters that will have their own stories later on and I'm definitely intrigued by the second book but I am hesitant to pick it up just because of how my experience was with this first book. I did also like the approach that the author gave to a recovering alcoholic storyline. I think the storyline was done very very well with a lot of research but with that storyline came also the male main character's Grady's background with his parents and I felt like that storyline was left unbelievably un just unresolved and it just a lot of loose ends that I was just like you know unfortunately this is a pass for me again not sure if I will pick up the second book it does seem like it's gonna be a good one but I'm generally scared <laughs> next was that kind of guy by Stephanie Archer and this is a book that I saw recommended by Romance Brook Rex and I was like you know what it seems like a cute romance I feel like I'm in the mood for a cute romance so let's dive into it and it was in fact a very cute laugh out loud swoon worthy romance between a chef who needs money to buy a restaurant and a construction worker who owns his own construction company who needs to reform his image in order to run for mayor this book I'm just like why is this book or just this author not talked about enough it was an absolute blast. The hate to love mixed with the fake dating in a small town where everybody's in each other's business. It was just absolutely amazing. I really enjoyed this so much and I am dying to continue reading the series. I've heard that each book just keeps getting better and better and I'm like, how? How? Because this first book was just, 
it, it was just so good so good next we have crossed by Emily McIntyre I absolutely love Emily's books I even have uh, some of them right here I even love her Sugar Lake series so much just an underrated series that definitely deserves more attention Crossed is in the Never After series which is basically kind of like reimagining of fairy tales done in a fractured way and Crossed features kind of like the Hunchback of Notre Dame and it was as I have never watched this movie so I didn't really know exactly what to expect but it does feature a priest who is battling with his, his own demons as well as ridding the world from demons in the form of either just women who tempt men, men who do things that are illegal or things that they should definitely not be doing. And this is where our female main character comes in. She is a temptress in just in every single way and he is ready to just unalive her but there's something about her that he just cannot quite shake and so he's constantly just trying to see her, trying to keep her in his thoughts. Unfortunately, our female main character is going through quite a lot of hardship. She barely has money and she has to kind of rely on this guy who used to date her mom and she just absolutely finds him disgusting but she has no choice whatsoever, especially when it comes to taking care of her little brother who is I believe was autistic I'm not entirely sure it was I definitely fell for her a lot like it just hurt to see her just navigating through all of this without any support at all to make matters worse she gets accused in unaliving someone and that just immediately forces her even more to depend on this guy that she should not be depending on I'll be honest I'm slightly disappointed in this book. I really wanted to love it as I have loved every other book of this series. I don't necessarily know what happened. It, I did feel like it had a different tone than her other books and I didn't particularly care for the characters. Except Quentin, which is the little brother, he definitely deserved a whole lot more of page time. There was also a scene towards the end that felt a lot like it was there for shock value. My initial rating for this is three stars. I'm still going I'm going to sit on it because I just I still don't know how I feel about it. I really really expected more and that might have, might have been it. I you know I again I love the Never After series and so part of that might have definitely just played a part in having those high expectations and then just those extremely high expectations not being met and that hurts because I love Emily so much and she deserves all the love in the world with what she's going through right now with her cancer. Unfortunately, it was a miss for me. Hopefully, it's a win for many others though. I really, really hope so. Next, I read Magnolia Parks by Jessa Hastings. You guys, what a fantastic story. This book was so toxic, yet so perfect. This book, this, this book and the characters just gave me the same feeling that I had with the Addicted slash Callaway Sister series by K.B. Ritchie back in the day when I read it in 2016, where I just felt like these characters were just going to live in my soul. Like, there was just no other way they were going to live in. They were just going to be there. And this book definitely deserves the hype. One thing that was suggested to me before I started reading was to read it, no, going into it knowing that it features a toxic relationship where all they do is hurt each other. So I went in with that mentality and that definitely helped in my reading experience because I wasn't reading it like, oh my gosh, why are these people doing it? No, I already knew, oh, this is normal for them. I am making my way very slowly through Daisy Hates, but I'm still enjoying it a lot. The covers changed and I have thoughts on those covers. Summary, don't like them. So I am super glad that I was able to snag the original covers before they changed, hoping that they also continue to do the series. At least for those who are collecting these original covers, Hopefully they make some that match. Next I read Things We Never Got Over by Lucy Score. I've been definitely sitting on this book for a while. I've been seeing it for months, maybe a year, maybe around the time since it came out and I just never picked it up. Finally, Sky from Sky's Library was like, we should buddy read it. Or maybe it was me, I can't remember, probably was her. We buddy read it, we binged it so fast, it was just so good. I was supposed to finish this in July and I didn't. I ended up finishing it in June because it was just so good. This features a grumpy sunshine who has this life pretty, pretty well, like no drama, no nothing. Unfortunately, 
We have Naomi who arrives in his town with a whole lot of drama that her twin sister Tina left behind. And in starts her story which was just absolutely fantastic. I love, love, love the small town. Normally I just, I generally just love small town romances. But I feel like the knock em out town was just on another level that I could not even deal with how amazing it was. Just the fact that the town knows when it's code red. Code red meaning shark week for the girls working at the bar and they try to leave the bar alone just so that they can relax. Not only that, our male main character Knox prepares like packages, like care packages for them for when they're in their monthly, you know, cycle. I was like, what in the world? Like, I want to live there. Like, it just, just sounded absolutely amazing. I loved every single character of the good ones, of course. It was just an absolute blast. The suspense towards the end had me like just passing those pages like crazy. Honestly, you guys, this book is an absolute treat and you guys need to read it like ASAP. I just noticed that I went a little bit out of order. Early in the month, I read Fourth Wing. This doesn't need any review right now. You guys already know my thoughts and if you haven't, I'm going to link them down below and maybe somewhere around here on the video so you guys can check out my thoughts and also just my reading vlog for it and just how I reacted. So my reading vlog is spoilery, but my final ramblings video is not spoilery. So you guys can go check it out and see what I thought about this wonderful book. I also finally finished King of Wrath by Anna Huang. This is also just a great book. I really like Anna Huang's books. I know she's can be hit or miss, but I loved the Twisted series a lot. I have it somewhere over there on my shelves. And I love when authors do spin-off series. Just, I just love it because you can kind of continue being in that world. And this was definitely part of it. This features an arranged marriage. And between enemies, it, they just absolutely cannot stand each other. And it was, again, just an absolute treat. It was like a very comforting and also just like a, kind of like a relaxing read. I think part of it because I was mostly reading it at nighttime right before I would go to sleep. So it just felt like the scene was set with just like low lighting, just already showered in bed. And it just, it just was a treat to read at that time. And I generally enjoyed this one and I need to get my hands on King of Pride as soon as it comes out from Bloom Books because uh, I really want those bonus epilogues or extended scenes that Bloom Books keeps adding to their books. Like it's just, I, I live for that. So I reread The Wild by Kay Webster. I love Kay Webster's books. Her books tend to be extremely taboo and extremely forbidden. The Wild is way high up there and I had read this book maybe a year or two years ago. I'm not even sure when I read it, um, but I realized that I never read the free. So with the Untamed releasing, which is a spinoff releasing towards the end of the month in July, I figured, you know what? I need to reread this. So I reread The Wild, which is, again, is extremely taboo. You cannot even find this on Amazon. You have to get it through the author's website. So make sure you do that if you're into taboo stories. It, I, I am not even gonna go into <laughs> what it is about. Same with the free. Just know that it's heavily on the taboo in an unconventional way that is completely frowned upon by the world, no matter how you look at it. So, uh, but it was, I gave these 3.75 and three stars um, just because, I, I don't know. It wasn't even the fact that it was forbidden or taboo or anything like that. I just, I, that's just how it felt. It didn't feel like a grand thing for me. Um, I am definitely looking for The Untamed, especially after reading the short novella or just a short bonus story called Daddy Read, which is free to read from the author's website. After reading that, I was like, The Untamed feels like it's just gonna be absolutely a delight. So, an extremely deliciously taboo. So, <laughs> I can't wait to read that one. Officially, the last book that I read this month was Rule by Cassandra Robbins. This is an age gap student teacher forbidden romance. We have our teacher who is wanting to be dean of the, of the college and his ex-girlfriend's sister. They definitely understand that this is just not good to be involved with each other because if they get involved, obviously Brett, which is our male main character, he's not going to get the promotion that he wants. But of course, the lines are still blurred and this is just deliciously hot. I don't remember much about it. so. 
take with that what you will but at the time that I read it it was just smutty it was just exactly what I needed to finish the month and that is it for this wrap up video I hope you guys like it and I hope you guys maybe pick up some of the books that I talked about and if you do please let me know because I would love to discuss them with you anyway thank you guys so much for watching and I shall see you next time bye